Hi folks and welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. I'm making this video here um, to describe for you a quantity called work and how it relates to another quantity called kinetic energy. So let's get started. So right here is where to, to uh, start with right here. Okay, work is force times distance. And there's a bit more to it than that, but for now I'm just going to start with this. It's force times distance, so it has units of newton meter. And a newton meter has its own name. Uh, one newton meter is called a joule. Now there's some rules about work as far as when it's positive, when it's negative, and when it's actually zero. And I'm going to go through those, th uh, throw the, uh, through these now. <clears throat> okay, whenever the force is perpendicular to the velocity, then the work done is zero. So here's kind of a picture of that. So in my picture, we've got a force which is upward, we might, one might say in the plus j direction, but the object's moving to the right. So that's a case where the work done is zero. All right. Next, whenever the force is in the same direction as the velocity, then the work done is positive. Right, so again, here's my picture that kind of describes that. When the force is to the right and the object's moving to the right, that's the case where you'd have a positive work term. All right, and then case three. Whenever the force and the velocity are in opposite directions, then the work done is negative. So, you know, if we have an object here and it's moving to the right, but the force is to the left, then the work is some negative number. All right, so now. Uh, so work is force times distance, but the force has to be parallel to the distance. And whenever the force makes a right angle, there's no work done. And whenever the force is in the direction of motion, the work is considered positive. And when the force is in the opposite direction of motion, the work is considered negative. Now I'm going to get right into, you know, what's the big deal about this stuff. So when you take a look at Newton's second law, which is net force equals mass times acceleration, if we take that equation and we multiply both sides by, I'm just going to call it delta x, some sort of change in motion. And, and I'm uh, talking about this in a one-dimensional sense for now. All right, but everything that we're talking about here applies uh, to three dimensions. This is our new line if we multiply it by delta x. And the left-hand side is now the work done on an object because force times delta x is a work term. The acceleration right, can be written like this, change in velocity over change in time. And then if we just kind of, for lack of a better way to uh, put it, reorder the stuff, and for delta x over delta t, we put the average velocity, which if an object starts at an initial velocity v sub o and a final velocity v final, the average can be written v final plus v sub o over 2. I should throw the qualifier, that's uh, assuming constant acceleration, but that's not important for the discussion. And when you go through the math here and distribute these, you get uh, basically this term, 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial squared. So these terms, these mathematical terms here and here, they have a special name. These are called kinetic energies. So 1 half mv final squared would represent the final kinetic energy. 1 minus 1 half mv initial squared would represent your initial kinetic energy. And what this equation is saying is that the work, all right, follow the equals, 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 is the difference between the two. So in other words, work is equal to your change in kinetic energy. When you do work on a system, you expect its kinetic energy to change. All right, so moving on. I'm going to go through examples of what this kind of looks like. Now keep it in mind, all right, let me write out what I just talked about. So work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Oops. <laughs> there we go. And I like to write that, you know, 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial squared. Or in other words, you can write that same equation like this. Okay. So if we look at this example, this 200 newton force, um, 
applied to this 50 kilogram object. We can observe this thing's going to accelerate to the right, so the, or I'm sorry, left. The motion diagram you know, would look something like this. The velocity get bigger and bigger and bigger. All right, and if I go through and start answering these questions, what is the work done by this 200 Newton force after the object moves three meters? Well, the work is going to be the force 200 newtons times three meters and we get 600 newton meter. The work is positive because the force vectors to the left and the objects moving to the left. So that's an example of a positive work term. All right, work done by the normal force. If we draw other forces in our picture, here's our weight mg, our normal force, something like this, not to scale. Uh, the work done by the normal is zero because the normal is perpendicular to the velocity. So if we look at our picture, this object's moving to the left, it's moving this way. The normal makes a right angle to that, so it's not doing any work in this uh, example. Work done by gravity is also zero, same reason, because the mg is perpendicular to the velocity. Net work done on the object, right? So we went through all three cases. The net work done on this object is the sum of the three work terms, which in this case is 600 newton meter or 600 joules, because remember a joule and a newton meter are the same thing. All right, well, next question, what is the final kinetic energy of the object? Well, remember your initial kinetic energy, one half mv initial squared plus your work is equal to your final kinetic energy one half mv final squared. You could also just write this final kinetic energy. In this example, this is a zero. The work is 600 joules. And I'm just going to put equals ke final. That's what this is. So the answer to that question is uh, the final kinetic energy of that object is 600 joules. And what is its speed? Well, if we take the kinetic energy, 600 joules, and we set that equal to one half the mass of the object times the speed squared. What are we going to get out of that? 1200 over 50 square rooted. I'm going to need a moment here to uh, get my math helper out here. Hmm. Stupid calculator I brought it doesn't have a square root uh, symbol on it. So if you or me, I got to. Well, I got, you know, all right, square root of 24 um, meter per second. Five, five squared is 25, so this is about four point maybe eight-ish um, meter per second, give or take. That's a technical term. Now I'm going to just move on. Okay. So we got another example here, this object sitting on a frictionless surface. All the forces are shown, um, remain constant. So we have a 200 Newton force to the left, a 50 Newton force right. What is the network done after it moves three meters? So there's a couple ways we can handle that. We can either find the net force and then times the three meters, or we can find the work terms um, independently and add them together. And let's do that. Let's, let's work, uh, write it like this. So the work done by the 200 Newton force is going to be 200 Newtons times 3 meters. And it's going to be positive because the force is to the left. And this object is definitely going to start moving to the left. And then up, um, the work done by the 50 Newton force is going to be 50 Newtons times 3 meters. And that work term is going to be negative because the object's moving to the left, but the force is to the right. And what do we get out of it? It's, uh, 600 newtons minus 150 newtons. I'm sorry, 600 joules minus 150 joules, which is 450 joules of work done. Now, what is the kinetic energy after it moves three meters? Well, the work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy is gonna equal the work done, which is 450 joules. And then the final speed of the object, we can say um, the kinetic energy, 450 joules, is equal to one half 
the mass, which is 50 kilograms times the speed squared. And get a number out of this thing. Give me just a moment. Whoops. Okay, so what I've got is um, V squared is going to equal, uh, I think I got 18 meters squared per second squared out of that. So the speed is going to be the square root of 18. This is some decimal. Uh, in units of meter per second, it's probably around four, four point something ish meter per second and that's good enough for this video I'll let the uh, user or the people taking the notes uh, fill in an exact value for that okay I'm gonna go through this last example here where it says a cannon uh, firing a 10 ooh, that was supposed to be 10 kilogram cannonball at 500 meter per second using a two meter barrel. Oh, well, there's the mass right there, 10 kilograms. Let's see, use principles of work and energy to find the net force on the ball while it's being fired. So when you use the work energy theorem, right, which says this, your initial kinetic energy, Ke1, plus any work done from one to two is equal to your final kinetic energy, Ke2. Now, I guess it looks a little tiny different, but that's the same is what I wrote up right at the beginning of this. I just changed the wording just a little bit. Your initial kinetic energy plus work equals your final kinetic energy. So I just gave those slightly different names. I am calling position one when the cannonball is here unfired and call that Ke1 instead of Ke initial. Okay, the work, I added this one to two. This is the net work done by all sources or by all forces between position one and what I'm gonna call position two, which is right here, just as the cannonball leaves the uh, barrel. Now, before the cannonball is fired, right, it's not moving, so the cannonball has an initial kinetic energy of zero. Now this work term, right, we can leave it alone or we can write it like this. It's equal to the net force acting on the cannonball times the distance through which that force is acting, which in this case is the two meters. I'm gonna go ahead and call just call that L, where the L is the two meters. And that's gonna equal the final kinetic energy of the cannonball, one half mv2 squared. I'm just gonna say v squared since there's only one velocity uh, in the problem. So our net force here, we can find by taking the one half mv squared and dividing the length out. Okay, so numerically we're gonna have one half 10 kilograms times 500 meter per second. And oops, and that squared, and then we're gonna divide out the two meters and see what we get. Folks, give me a moment here. right. If I work this right, I got 625,000 newtons. I'm just going to double check that. 500. Yeah, okay, I'm going to go with it for now. So it looks like, you know, uh, 600 plus thousand newtons accelerating that ball. Now remember, we're, you know, we accelerated a 10 kilogram ball from zero to 500 meter per second in no time flat. So I was expecting a pretty large force. Let's see, next part, sketch a velocity graph of the ball while it's being fired. So let's go ahead and do that. It says sketch, so this is good enough, right? Velocity against time. Now at t equals zero, we haven't fired it yet. We're gonna start timing it right there. So at t equals zero, it's not moving yet. 
a short time later that we do not know, the velocity is, what was that, 500 meter per second? And we'll go ahead and make a constant acceleration assumption. Now that may or may not be uh, true or accurate, but it's a way to move forward and get some results. They may not be perfect results, but I think they'll be okay. Now it says to find the acceleration of the ball. Um, all right, so acceleration, remember, is change in velocity over change in time. And that's going to be the slope of the line between these, rise over run, where this is the rise. Whoops, I wanted a different color for that. This is the rise, and we have that 500 meter per second, but we don't have the time. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and use that graph to um, write an equation to find the time. Remember the displacement, the delta x, whoops, come on, is equal to this bound area right here. Um, one half t times the 500 meter per second. And that delta x is the length of the barrel, two meters. So we can go ahead and solve that for t, the time. Give me a moment here. And I got 0 0.008 seconds for the time. And now we can get the acceleration. which is um, rise over run, so that's going to be 500 meter per second over 0 0.008 seconds, and let's see what we get out of that. Wow, <laughs> I got 62,500 meter per second per second. So pretty massive acceleration. Again, we are firing a cannon, and then very last question on this handout to find the net force from Newton's second law. So, Newton's second law, remember, is net force equals mass times acceleration. And for that cannonball, that was a 10, whoops, a 10 kilogram mass at a acceleration we just calculated of 62,500 meter per second per second. So we get 625000 newtons. And I think that's consistent with what we got uh, from our work energy equation here. So again, the point of this video is to go through a couple examples of um, the work energy theorem, how work relates to kinetic energy. I'm just going to do a quick recap. Work is force times distance. It right? has units of newton meter. The work is positive when the force and velocity are in the same direction. The work is negative when the force and velocity are in opposite directions. The work done is zero when the force makes a right angle to the velocity. Those are three crucial um, facts about work. And again, they're summarized right here. Another very important thing, what does work do? Like, why is it so important? Because the work done on a system is equal to uh, the change in kinetic energy of the system. And in most physics classes, my own included, we're going to expand this uh, very soon to include potential energies and come up with kind of a broader, more general way to uh, equate work and energy and have a, uh, just a beautiful way to um, make predictions about the universe. So I hope this video has helped out. Have a great day.